Mr. Salas, you too are recognized. Thank you. I also too want to recognize the students from Bakersfield College. I do want to also recognize members when I used to be a staffer, used to help organize these students to come up to the Capitol. And so it's so good to see the tradition continue. And it's also coming up and everyone's out here. But also to recognize a person that was very instrumental in bringing the students out here, and that's uh, Mr. Jack Brigham. And uh, I know Mr. Brigham wasn't able to join us this time, but I do want to acknowledge him and everything he's done also with Milt Younger. But the students, thank you guys for coming out here. I hope you guys learn a lot, and hopefully we get a chance to uh, talk to some of the legislators here. So thank you guys for being here. Member file items 98 through 103 shall be continued. File item 104 is passed and retained. Members, we are going to move to file item 105. That's ACR 193 by Mr. Calderon. The clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 193 by Assembly Member Calderon and others relative to technology and innovation. Mr. Calderon, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As co-chair of the California Technology and Innovation Caucus, I am proud to present ACR 193, which proclaims June as California's Technology and Innovation Month. Our state's greatest asset and the biggest driver of innovation are the people who call, call our great state home. Enacting laws that foster enable and, and enable entrepreneurs that continue to thrive and develop new ideas and technologies will help preserve a strong and sustainable economy. As the sixth largest economic power in the world, we have a responsibility to our constituents to ensure the American dream remains achievable for all that strive to make their lives better. Whether it's breakthroughs in communications, healthcare, transportation, energy, travel, or commerce, advances in technology will play a critical role for achieving, achieving California's citizens' dreams. As our world becomes increasingly competitive, we cannot take our past successes for granted. We must stay focused on expanding opportunities to our youth, especially our state's most disadvantaged populations, as well as ensuring the students who graduate from our UCs and CSUs have the tools to access this new economy. ACR 193 acknowledges the pivotal, pivotal, pivotal role the technology and innovation industry has have in our state and celebrates its pioneering spirit by commemorating June as California Technology and Innovation Month. Thank you for your time, members, and I respectfully request an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Mr. Lowe, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Members, I also rise in support of this as co-chair of the Technology and Innovation Caucus in the legislature. Uh, we need to ensure that we support technology innovation not only in Silicon Valley or Silicon Beach, 
but throughout the entire state, uh, whether it be in agriculture, and manufacturing, semiconductor, shared economy, and the like, I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Mr. Calderon, would you like co-authors on the first roll? Yes, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Very good. Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors on the resolution. This is co-authors on ACR 193. Co-authors, the clerk will close the roll. There are 72 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. File item 106 is H.R. 48. Clerk will read. House Resolution 48 by Assemblymember Brown relative to the 4th of July. Ms. Brown, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 240 years ago today, the Founding Fathers gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, preparing to sign the Declaration of Independence. This was the first event in a journey that has culminated with the United States of America becoming the most prosperous nation in the world. This journey has, been, has not been without trial and setback, but the 4th of July is a day that brings out the best in our people, our culture, and community. This 4th of July, over 100 million Americans will celebrate with their family, their friends, and neighborhoods over barbecue and parties. There will be 150 million hot dogs, 750 pounds of chicken, 190 million pounds of red meat, and watch 25 million people will watch fireworks light up our spacious sky. The 4th of July is a celebration of our freedom and prosperity, and it reminds us that regardless of the barriers we face, we can achieve anything because we live in America. I respectfully ask for your I vote and for the first roll to be open to co-authors. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Seeing no additional discussion on this HR, Ms. Brown's asking the first roll be open for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors on the House resolution, co-authors on HR 48. There are, close the roll, there are 77 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Members, we are going to pass temporarily on file item 107. 108 is passed and retained. Also passing temporarily on 109 and 110. Pass and retain on file item 111. Members, we're moving to file item 112. That's SCR 98. Clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 98 by Senator Bell and others relative to developmental services. Mr. Thurman, Mr. Thurman you are recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. I rise to present SCR 98. Uh, this resolution acknowledges the 50th anniversary of California's community-based developmental services system. This is the system of regional centers that have been created to serve people in California who have a developmental disability. There are 300,000 Californians with a developmental disability. These nonprofit regional centers, there are 21 of them throughout the state, help to provide the services that allow uh, individuals with developmental disabilities to live independently and with dignity in the community. Without them, these are Californians who live in institutions that are costly and expensive and that would deny Californians the right to do and live the same way each and every one of us wants to, with dignity and respect. Fifty years ago, the first two regional centers were created, one in Los Angeles and one in San Francisco. I've had the opportunity to work for the regional center in San Francisco and the regional center of the East Bay. I can tell you that these centers provide incredible services 
to Californians to ensure that they have access to education, to a job, an affordable place to live, connections to their community, and they deserve our support. I'm so proud that we are honoring this community on the same year where we provided $300 million to support those with a developmental disability. We've kept the promise and we're continuing to strengthen a great system. I respectfully ask for your I vote on SCR 98. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, Mr. Thurman, would you like co-authors? Please. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is co-authors adding onto SCR 98. Co-authors adding onto the resolution. Clerk will close the roll. There are 75 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Thurman, back to you for your guest introduction relative to the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I want to introduce some incredible advocates who have been fighting for our regional center systems and for the people that we serve. They are Jim Burton, who is the executive director of the Regional Center of the East Bay, Evangeline Imana Ayamura, who is the vice president of the Regional Center of the East Bay Board, and Evan, her 11-year-old son, who has autism, but is not defined that way. He is an advocate and a champion for others, and I'm honored that he is here with us today. I'd like to also introduce members of the sponsoring organization of the Association of Regional Centers who are sitting in the gallery. They are advocate Daniel Sabino and legislative advisor Rick Rollins, who has a 25-year-old son with autism and is the former secretary of the Senate. Please help me in welcoming our friends and partners and our guests. Members, we are going to move to file item 94 related to the budget. That's AB 1618. Clerk will read. 
Assembly Bill 1618 by the Committee on Budget and Act Related to Mental Health Services, making appropriation therefore to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Mr. Ting, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 1618 is our Mental Health Services Trailer Bill. It's back for concurrence. It establishes the No Place Like Home program, which includes $2 billion for distribution to counties to provide supportive housing for persons eligible for services under Proposition 63. And those are folks who are homeless, chronically homeless, or at risk of chronic homelessness. This also will, the money will be distributed within four categories of competitive grants, and it's by population. It also requires annual reporting by the counties and the Housing and Community Development Agency to the legislature, along with an evaluation to be posted online. Respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Seeing no discussion or debate on the item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. 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 Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. Ayes 62, noes 4. Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 95, members. File item 95. AB 1622 on the budget. Mr. Ting, I'm sorry, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1622 by the Committee on Budget and act relating to the state budget, making appropriation therefore to take effect immediately budget bill. Mr. Ting, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 1622 amends the 2016 Budget Act to provide additional resources to the Department of Housing and Community Development and the Department of Health Care Services related to the No Place Like Home initiative. In particular, directs $10 million from the current Proposition 41 for loans to counties and or nonprofit organizations to provide transitional housing or shelter facilities for homeless veterans. It also directs $10 million from the California Emergency Solutions Grant Program for expansion of existing homeless youth and exploitation program at the Office of Emergency Services. Respectfully ask for I vote. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Mr. Obernolte, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in support of AB 1622. I feel these new pilot programs are a very meaningful down payment on the solution to homelessness in California. I urge an I vote. Ms. Kim, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in strong support of AB 1622, where most of our... Um, focus around affordable housing uh, for the uh, homeless and mentally ill has centered around permanent housing. I want to highlight how important it is to provide uh, transitional housing for the uh, homeless youth. Earlier this year, I introduced a bill to expand a successful grant program to provide crisis and stabilization services to more counties statewide an important first step toward getting our homeless youth off the streets. I'm pleased this bill expands these uh, services to four underserved counties and gives $10 million infusion to the program. This is a seven and a half times than what is currently uh, uh, allocated. Funding for this program has been stagnant since it was first enacted in the 1980s. Members, this is an important first step to providing our vulnerable youth with a pathway to successfully exit homelessness and live independently. The last thing we want is for our kids to become chronically homeless adults. And I want to thank and I'm grateful for the leadership on both sides of the aisle for coming to an agreement on how we can best serve our neediest population. I ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Ms. Chang. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in support of AB 1622. This is legislation that we need to proudly support as it provides critical funding for transitional housing for homeless veterans. Anyone that serves our country deserves to come home knowing they will be thanked, honored, and taken care of in their time of need. AB 1622 directs $10 million to transitional housing where homeless veterans can live in a healthy environment and receive treatment. The bipartisan push behind this proposal is the type of effort this body should always strive to do. 
Together, we are tackling the shocking fact that California is home to the highest population of homeless veterans. This legislation also provides significant funds to aid the nearly 300,000 homeless youth living in California. Thanks to this proposal, a number of counties, including two in my district, will receive funding for homeless youth pilot programs providing much needed housing and treatment. In LA County alone, there is estimated to be nearly 47,000 homeless individuals. Of those individuals, over 2,700 are veterans and more than 3,500 are children. I am pleased that we are working toward resolving our homeless epidemic with a comprehensive proposal that includes specified funding for these two vulnerable populations. I am proud to be part of this important effort to secure funding for our veterans and homeless youth, and with that, I urge an I vote. Thank you, Ms. Chang. All discussion on the item having ceased. Mr. Ting, you may close if you wish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This $20 million is critical money to be directed at homeless veterans and homeless youth. Respectfully ask for I vote. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tie the vote. I-76, no zero. The measure passes. Members, we are moving to file item 109 by Mr. Dodd. File item 109 is AJR 42. Clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 42 by Assemblymember Dodd, relative to the transport by rail of flammable and combustible liquids. Mr. Dodd, you may open. Mr. Speaker and members, AJ 42, AJR 42 urges Congress and the federal agencies to expedite the rulemaking and implementation of critical safety regulations for the transportation of volatile liquids by rail, including crude oil. In the past decade, there's been a tremendous increase in the transportation of crude oil by rail cars. There are several pending plans in the state, including one to ship up to 70,000 barrels of crude oil per day through Northern California. A recent environmental impact report found that such trains present significant risk of spills, environmental damage, and loss of human life if any cars derail. The state recently passed enhanced emergency response legislation. However, federal preemption prevents the state from taking action to require specific rail protocols, which are critical to stop a disaster before it starts. Uh, this resolution enjoys broad support, has no opposition, and passed out of transportation with bipartisan support. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Dodd. See no discussion or debate on the item. I'm sorry, Mr. Dodd, would you like co-authors on the resolution? Mr. Dodd's asking for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors on the resolution. This is for co-authors on the resolution. The clerk will close the roll. There are 67 co-authors added. This is an AJR, requires a roll call vote. Clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote on the resolution. This is AJR 42. All members vote who desire to vote on the resolution. Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 72, no zero. Resolution is adopted. Members, we have additional guests with us in the assembly gallery. Ms. Irwin, you are recognized for your special guest introduction. All right, good morning, everybody. As chair of the assembly cyber select committee, it brings me great pleasure to recognize the students in the gallery that competed in the inaugural California Innovation Challenge yesterday. In this demonstration project, more than 50 students from high schools across the state competed in a series of timed cybersecurity challenges, defending the integrity of computer networks and cracking complex codes. 
I want to thank GoBiz and Cyber California, the hosts that put together this event, which served as a launch event for the proposed annual statewide cyber innovation challenge for high school students. Since I started working on cybersecurity issues, I cannot tell you how many times a complicated discussion has ended with the agreement that the answer is a better trained and more capable cyber workforce. The private sector and government sector both have a desperate need for more cybersecurity professionals, reportedly 1 million by 2020. These high paying jobs should be based here in California, and these young people are that future. Please join me in giving them a round of applause.